Hello everyone, welcome back to more political chatter. In today's video, we will be talking about the updated state of the race when it comes to the 2024 United States Senate elections, how Democrats have made some gains uh, in, so in some areas, um, in some regions of the country, in some specific Senate races and uh, specific states, uh, you know, in these individual races. But overall, Republicans are still overwhelmingly favored to win control of the Senate. And Democrats just got really unlucky, and that is because of the map that is being used this year. Of course, um, uh, you know, in, in 2022, they were able to pick up a seat. But honestly, when you look at that map, yes, it was expected to be a red wave. But just the map was so much better for Democrats. And what I mean by that is when you look at the individual battleground states, uh, primarily Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Georgia, Arizona, and Nevada, um, uh, the th uh, two out of the five were Republican held. So all Democrats had to do um, to keep majority, which was 50 seats then, was just hold three seats. That's all they had to do. They could um, let the Republicans take the others. But uh, what ended up happening was Democrats were actually able to flip a seat, that being Pennsylvania. So that allowed them, uh, while they kept the rest of their seats, Nevada, Arizona, and Georgia, they were able to, uh, you know, pick off one of the Republican ones as well. That was Pennsylvania. John Fetterman won. So when they had 50 seats beforehand, they increased that to uh, 51 seats. Now, this election is a little different because you have a wide range of at least semi-battleground states. Montana, Wisconsin, uh, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Nevada, Ar uh, Arizona, that's seven. Texas is eight. Florida is nine. Those are the remotely close battleground states. And what you might notice is that in the seven of the nine, only not Texas and Florida, seven of the nine are Democratic held. So what that means is that Democrats now have a lot more uh, space, have a lot more seats to defend, and a lot less seats where they have an opportunity to flip them like they did in 2022. Where they, where they were able to pick off Pennsylvania and pretty easily hold their other seats, Georgia, Arizona. Nevada wasn't easy, but they did keep Nevada. So this time around, the Democrats, uh, they have 51 seats, but even worse for them, they have an automatic flip. The Republicans have an automatic flip, I should say, in the state of West Virginia. So while they had 51 seats in 2022, that's what they currently have, Joe Manchin is retiring in West Virginia. Democrats aren't even making a play in West Virginia. That is an automatic flip for the Republicans. So it's already 50-50. Now, I do currently have Kamala Harris winning the presidency in 2024. So that means that, that Democrats only need 50 seats to have majority. So at least that's good for them. They only need 50, uh, 50 seats because the VP cast the tie-breaking vote. They don't need 51 seats. However, that would be challenging uh, in and of itself. Even keeping 50 seats, just losing one seat, which is West Virginia, you'd have to keep all your others, or you could lose one and then flip the state of Texas, maybe Florida, but Texas is the only one that seems possible. So overall, the Democrats are going to have a very tough time defending all of their seats. That will be an extremely difficult task. Again, they have, uh, or I should start off with, uh, you know, saying that it is one thing to have Democratic incumbents in Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Arizona, and Nevada. Those incumbents are crushing it. Let's just take a look. So in Wisconsin, even though they're very close states presidentially, uh, Wisconsin, Tammy Baldwin looks very good. Plus three in the Emerson poll. That's close. But I mean, just look, she leads in every single poll, most of them by six or seven or five. It's really not even that close. Um, Pennsylvania has been looking a little closer in the most recent polls. Um, but still, Bob Casey holds a pretty strong lead in, in all the most recent polls, most of them above a 5% margin. You've got Arizona, for example. That's a lockdown for Democrats there. Uh, Ruben Gallego up 14 in this morning console poll against Carrie Lake, a failed candidate. So I won't go through all of them. But the point is, um, across these states where you have Democratic incumbents, or in this case of Arizona and Michigan, actually, um, Democratic newcomers, uh, but they are seats that are held by Democrats who are just retiring. You have very strong races for Democrats. They're performing very well, much better. Uh, their chances are much better in these places than are Kamala Harris's um, in these states. 
So they're looking very good. However, but you know, in any normal map, that would be great. You know, they'd be they'd be favored for majority. However, with 51 seats right now, Democrats have two surprisingly, uh, or I mean, it's just surprising that they have incumbents in these states that Democrats are elected to the Senate in these states. That's Ohio and that's Montana. Yes, these two states, even though they voted for Donald Trump by for Montana 16% in 2020, for Ohio 8% in 2020. Those were the margins in 2020. Despite that, they do have Democratic senators. So it will be a very um, a difficult task for Democrats to hold both of these seats. Uh, this is my current rating, by the way. This map, what you're looking at, these are my current ratings. So Ohio, I do have going to share with Braun right now. I think that he hangs on because an eight-point margin at, uh, in 2020 for Trump, at least that isn't like a 16-point margin in Montana, right? And mind you, this is a presidential ballot, so voters will be very partisan in in these Senate races, right? If they vote one way on the presidential level, then they are likely to vote for the same party down ballot as well. So Ohio is one thing, and even that is controversial, but the Republican here, Bernie Marino, is making serious gains. I mean, he is looking better and better in polling. However, it, looks, it still looks very close in polling. Bernie Marino just led in a poll release today. Um, and then the spending. Also, Republicans are outpacing Democrats in terms of spending that should be an area of concern. I'm extremely close to saying that Sherrod Brown will lose in Ohio. I really am. But right now, um, I do have it tilt Democrat. Now, Montana, I think, is a lost cause. And yes, it's a lean margin, but it's right near the likely margin, which is a 5% victory. I mean, Montana, I think John Tester, the Democrats, I think they're doomed in Montana. I mean, Montana voted for Donald Trump by 16 points in the last election. Now, this is a presidential ballot. John Tester was able to hang on in 2018, but that was a midterm election year. It was a blue wave, and it's very different from being on a presidential ballot, right? Again, voters are much more partisan uh, when they vote uh, for president, you know, down ballot compared to a midterm. Um, so when Trump is winning by somewhere around 16 against Harris in Montana, is it even possible for John Tester to hang on? I don't think so. It's being reflected in polling. I don't know why we're even acting like this will be that close of a race. I think T Tester will narrowly. I mean, I don't know. It's, it's even tough to say that he's going to outperform polls because situations like this, the polls are, are, are always, um, they never underestimate, uh, like, you know, an incumbent in a deep, uh, in, in, in this instance, a deep red state, uh, a deep state of the, uh, of the other party, if that makes sense. For example, in the same state in 2020, the popular governor, Steve Bullock, he was leading in many polls. Bullock plus one, he was a Democrat, plus one, uh, the Republican plus one, plus three, plus four. He ended up losing by 10. It wasn't even that close. So you see, I don't know how to explain it, but the polling always overestimates, um, you know, the, someone he, who is a part of the party that the state as a whole is deeply against. It really is. When they're an incumbent or like a governor for Steve Bullock, if that makes sense. I think Montana is a lost cause for Democrats. So there you go. That's already 51 seats. But good for Democrats. Remember, they have uh, the seven of the nine battleground states are being held by Democrats. Well, what about the last two, Texas and Florida? Now, Florida looks more and more out of reach, but Texas, just some day, a uh, couple of days ago, a poll from Texas was released that showed a Democrat up in the election against Ted Cruz. This is Ted Cruz's seat. Colin Allred in a morning council poll beating Ted Cruz by a point. It looks increasingly, increasingly tight. So that is the chance that Democrats have to flip. Um, because if they do flip it, then that's 50 seats, and that's how they win majority with uh, with losing Montana. I wholeheartedly believe that Democrats have a better chance in Texas than they do in Montana. That would be my message to Democrats. Aim in Texas, forget about Montana, because Texas looks more and more close. So that's the state of the race right now in the Senate races, uh, despite setbacks like in, in Texas specifically, but as well as Ohio and, I mean, across these blue wall states and plus Nevada and Arizona, where they once looked close, um, Republicans are losing ground due to their uh, lack of strong or semi-strong candidates or just normal candidates. 
Um, despite that, they are still heavily uh, favored to win majority. So thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe down below. That helps out a lot. Check out my latest video um, about the 2024 election to see, you know, the latest updates about this, this insane, this truly insane race. So again, please subscribe and thank you all for watching this video.